what we like. The 201 horsepower turbocharged and Linfa and the load of luxury car-like features that come with Akia Souls exclaimed trim level continue to impress. The heated steering wheel was much appreciated through the extended winter, and we had only one driver complain that even the low setting on the heated seat was too hot. For even deeper coverage of the soul, view our buyer's guide in-depth review. The crossover form factor with its high seating position and good visibilities is our commuting chores, during which we also appreciate the infotainment system's tidy integration of Apple CarPlay with the Kazone features. Many far more expensive cars fumble where the soul smoothly swaps back and forth between your phone's playlist and maps and the car's radio stations and native navigation system. Even those of our reviewers who sneer that the Soul isn't really a crossover since it lacks an all-wheel drive option had to admit that it was a pretty capable snow car all the same, with ample ground clearance to negotiate on plowed side streets and a traction control system that doesn't shut everything down as soon as the road gets slippery. A set of General Altimax Arctic 12 winter tires that we mounted in early December made it even better, while they lasted see what went wrong, below. The X claims turbo engine is stronger than most everything else in its class but requires oil changes at 6,500 mile intervals, 1,000 miles sooner than Kia suggests for the naturally aspirated 1.6 and 2.0 litre fours that power lower soul trim levels. Over a 40,000 mile test, that'll mean at least one extra dealer visit. Since our last report, it has been in twice. At just past 14,000 miles, the dealer replaced the cabin and engine air filters and all three wiper blades, with the oil change, it cost $163. An oil change and tire rotation at just under 20,000 miles cost $58. What we don't like, the greatest generator of complaints in the Soul's logbook is its 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission DCT. Specifically its automated clutches that seem to be wearing prematurely. Unlike its performance when new, the Soul now behaves like a teen driver who has just learned to drive a manual transmission, with too much slip when starting from a stop followed by a too early upshift to second gear. It also slips at other times, occasionally accompanied with a harsh engagement. The problem was first noted when the car was carrying three passengers and their luggage. So we initially attributed it to the load, but it's an out time situation now. The slippage and the transmission's general demeanor make it hard to drive smoothly, especially in stop and go traffic. Drivers can mitigate the situation somewhat by taking manual control via the shift lever, but this only highlights the Kia's lack of paddle shifters let alone that it doesn't offer the manual transmission this engine deserves. Ironically, there are paddles in our long-term Subaru Impreza which has a continuously variable automatic transmission and, despite that gearbox and significantly less power, feels more smoothly responsive when driving away from a stop. The Kia's DCT slippage seems to be getting worse and, although we've asked the dealer to inspect it on two service visits so far, it appears not to be extreme enough to command the service advisor's attention. We can't be sure whether it's attributable to the clutch slippage or to the way our drivers have adjusted to it, but we've also recorded slightly reduced fuel economy, enough to change our overall average from 27 miles per gallon to 26 miles per gallon. We might have to increase our level of insistence with our dealer soon. Drivers have also complained of hearing minor squeaks and rattles as the car ages and expressed some general disappointment that, power aside, the soul's high riding crossover attributes diminish the amount of driving enjoyment you might experience in a hatchback car of similar dimensions, such as a Volkswagen Golf. The cargo space behind the back seat isn't all that big, and that seat doesn't fold completely flat, so it doesn't carry much more stuff than a Golf, either. What went wrong? Nothing major. A Michigan pothole at the left front winter tire at 20,925 miles. It was February 21st, so rather than buy one tire, our road warriors pulled the gear into the CD garage and swapped back to the standard Nexon all-season rubber at all four corners. As it turned out, the snow kept coming around here. The Nexons, though, really are all weather useful, somewhat offsetting their mediocre grip when it's warm and dry. 
road or from these standard tires also approximates the noise from snow or the treads, so some of our drivers never even noticed that we'd changed the car's footwear. With any luck, we'll finish the 40 comma mile test before we need new winter tires. Where we went, we racked up 1,000 miles on a single trip without leaving our home state by taking a voyage into the remote northern reaches of Michigan's Upper Peninsula, where Bio's guide assistant editor Eric Stafford experienced the stock tires' abilities in snow he had yet to mount the winter rubber. Then it wandered Indiana a little. Otherwise, the soul's recent adventures all start with the letter C, it has taken us to Chicago, plus Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Columbus, Ohio. What we like, our long-term Kia Soul has a lot of moxie. Mostly, that stems from it being the exclaimed trim, equipped with the 201 horsepower turbocharged and Linfa and 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission, a powertrain that tops the tiny crossover segment for accelerative ability. The Soul's boxy shape has plenty of rear seat room for adult-sized passengers and a lots of cargo. We're also enjoying the panoply of features on our well-optioned long termer including power folding mirrors, a leather trim cabin, and the ease of use that stems from thoughtful attributes such as the illuminated USB port at the base of the center stack. A backlit USB port that you can see as soon as you start the car may seem like an inconsequential thing, until you get into a car at night and try to plug your phone into a hidden port in a dark, unreachable corner. We cite that just as an example of how well thought out and organized the cabin is, all the functions a driver routinely accesses seem to be exactly where you first look, and they work just as you'd anticipate. The first routine service oil change, tire rotation, and inspections also included a manufacturer-recommended fuel additive, about which we might complain except that the whole thing cost less than $80. So we like that, as well as the 27 miles per gallon average we are recording which is pretty good considering how often we tap into that turbo power. What we don't like, as much as it excels in the commuter weekend shopping duties that are the lot of most small crossovers, the soul can let us down when asked to do more. Pack in three adults in this stuff for a weekend trip out of state, as buyer's guide assistant editor Annie White did for a solar eclipse viewing journey to Kentucky, and a sensitive driver notices things such as the degraded ride quality in a vehicle that otherwise does well considering its short wheelbase and tall stance. Similarly, given a load to carry and a traffic jam, the dual-clutch automatic shift quality that seems responsive in around town duty with only the driver aboard instead feels both harsh and indecisive. What went wrong? Nothing except for the time an inattentive dolt at a gas station backed into our soul and smudged the paint on the front bumper cover. We'll repair it at the end of our 40 comma mile test, along with any other battle scars the cure crews, and report back on the cost. Where we went, to Kentucky for the solar eclipse. Otherwise, our soul has racked up most of its miles in routine daily driving and weekend chores, with brief ventures a few hundred miles away within Michigan or in Ohio. Yeah. <laughs>